Hi, Marika. Thank you for joining. Hi. How are Am you I... doing today? <laughs> Where are Can you joining from? I'm joining from Ireland. Awesome. Uh, could you share your role and company in the chat if you get a chance? Yeah, just a second. Wonderful. I'm actually here in Ely in the UK right now, so we're not too far apart. <laughs> cool. Someday I'll make it to Ireland. I haven't yet, but one day I will. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So let's get started. So this is a 30-minute lightning talk uh, to share a little bit about the course and also share some of my learnings and experiences in product marketing. I've been a product marketing leader for over 13 years, and this has shaped a lot of my learning, my experiences, and also uh, made me realize what's important and uh, what truly matters. I go by the three values, inspire, influence, and impact. This has shaped my thinking, it has shaped my decision making, and also helped me become a better human <laughs> along the way. Uh, my home is San Francisco, and I love flowers and butterflies. I'm always chasing the next uh, garden or park that I can find in my travels. And I am a foodie, and I love uh, sweets and bakeries. So macaroons have been one of my highlights in my adventure search so far. Through my career, I have learned different aspects all the way from winning together whether it's been a Fortune 500 company or a startup. And this has helped shape a lot of my thinking, but it also got me the chance to be a continuous learner, be a student for life. And I'm very fortunate to have been part of different communities, uh, organizations that have helped shape uh, building different teams together. So in product marketing, I've had experiences leading teams, growing teams, and have had the chance to try all different aspects of product marketing from messaging and positioning to launches via persona, as well as competitive intelligence and product and sales enablement. So thinking about different aspects of it. Today, what we're going to do is uh, walk through some key elements of product marketing. I always say as a product marketing leader, it's important for us to know what our signature skills are. So I'm going to follow the theme of inspire, influence, and impact. And we're going to talk about first, how do we craft a narrative? What does it look like? How do we tell our story so we can capture the hearts and minds of our target audience? Influence is about creating that launch, creating the go-to-market plan, and how do we make sure we have something that is successful? And then the third part is about impact. This is where we bring people into the process, where we look at cross-functional teams. How do we build that collaboration across product sales, marketing, and customer success. Hi, Natalia. Thank you for joining. Um, when you get a chance, please share in the chat where you're joining and from, uh, your role and your company as well. Pleasure to have you here. Why this matters and why I put together this course has uh, stemmed from the idea that product marketing, I believe that we can be the linchpin, we can be the core at crafting and telling the stories, but at the same time, also bringing the best in each other and making sure the teams together are successful across product sales and marketing. So let's dive in. I'll give you a little bit of the flavor of what to expect from the course itself, and uh, we'll learn a few things along the way. So thank you both for joining today. In Inspire, we're going to talk about what does crafting that narrative look like. So first and foremost is, do we understand our audience, right? There are so many terms, uh, buyer persona, user persona, ICP, the ideal customer profile, target audience, segments, market categories that are all important for us to understand. So the first step that I like to think about as product marketing is laying down the foundation of understanding where am I today? as an organization, where am I headed as an organization? What is it that my product can do? So what is the maturity level of the product? And then do I understand my buyer persona? So that's key and fundamental to everything that we do. Once we figure out who our buyer persona is, these could be profiles, these could be personas that we're crafting, then we go and build our messaging and positioning. So in my messaging and positioning, I like to think of first 
is my decision maker, right? The one who has the big bucks, who is probably making the decision whether this product is going to solve their need or not, and if they have the budget to do that. In that same example, we're looking at what's the pain point. We're looking at the value proposition and the proof points. The second persona that I like to focus on is my influencer. So these are people who are part of that decision-making um, and they probably will say, yes, this is a good solution or no, this is not a good solution. So I like to keep those two in mind anytime that I'm creating any messaging and positioning. So in this, what you're seeing is the first half is that positioning, right? Do we understand the persona? Do we understand the market we're going after? And then the second half is including your copy blocks, including all the messaging pillars, everything that you need to articulate the value that you're going to offer for this uh, positioning itself. For example, we had a B2B SaaS platform. And in this, we were trying to put together who my persona was. So for the decision maker, we selected our CIO. And for the influencer, this was the IT manager. So someone who is the practitioner here. And then for the pain point, I wanted to focus on two aspects. What is the intent? And what is the level of expertise that they have? So here, because this was a B2B SaaS platform, we were looking at disparate technology stacks that were across the business, across our customers' uh, requirements. And then their expertise was there was legacy systems and there was emerging technology. So how do you kind of bridge the gap between the two? So these were key pain points that our customers were facing. And then where we could have positioned ourselves was we realized where we were competing in, right? So the market category that we are in, um, we were going from mid-market to the enterprise. And we also realized the differentiator is how do we position ourselves as a unified platform? So these were a few examples to help craft that story. And what ended up becoming that story and that narrative is how do we drive the business forward? So we wanted our customers to start thinking about it. We can connect everything from applications to data to people. We can engage everywhere and we can run anywhere. So this became the theme and the narrative that we crafted. And that led to then positioning our products and solutions that we had. So we had at its core, the core integration product, and then adjacent offerings that were supporting our business needs and our customers' business needs. So here's one example of how to think about your persona and the work that you're doing. The second example that I have for you is from uh, the services organization. So this was part of uh, a services and solutions function that I was supporting. And what I was able to do here was start crafting the services lifecycle. So from the data center to the edge became the story. We started looking at what are the different elements through that services lifecycle that is important for our customers. And how do we connect the dots between them? So from discover, design, implement, support, optimize, and retire, this allowed our customers to realize, okay, at what points in time do I bring which product or solution? And this was a great way to tell that story. Another lens that I like to think about for product marketing is storytelling. How do we tell our stories today? And what does that look like in a broader spectrum? So. If you're familiar with the stages of the funnel, right? We talk about awareness, consideration, and decision. This is a simplified format for that, right? For a buyer journey, all the way from discover, learn, try, buy, to advocacy is what we wanna aim for. So as product marketing, we're probably supporting all of these areas and maybe some areas more than the others, right? So depending on where your product maturity is itself. These are all key aspects to connect the dots. But at the end of the day, it's asking the question, what creates and what makes a memorable story? Three aspects. The start is make it worth their time to care, right? The discover, the learn aspects of it. The middle is how do we gain our trust and credibility? That's that try and buy phase. And then the end is where we find our true storyteller. So these are your advocates, these are the folks that will go and tell everybody else how awesome your solution, your product, or your service itself is. So that's how to think about connecting the dots between all the narratives that we're putting together to how does that translate into content? How does that translate into all of the work that we do as product marketing? I'll pause um, any thoughts, comments, reactions to what I've shared so far in the Inspire, how to craft a narrative or any questions that I can help answer.
And if it's all good, you can give me a thumbs up um, and we can move forward. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I don't know if I can unmute myself or you prefer me to type something in the chat. No, go ahead. You can speak. Uh, there's a reason why there's an unmute button. Go for it. Not <clears throat> yeah, sorry. I was drinking something. So that's why I did late. <laughs> okay. <No worries. laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm really curious about storytelling. So do you mean that we have to create like uh, an overarching narrative that mm -hmm. we then put into our, I don't know, blog posts? And our social media or so this memorable story that i'm seeing on this slide mm -hmm. which formats of content is it applicable so it's applicable to all formats right so what you're seeing here is tying it back to the buyer journey so in the mm -hmm. discover phase you're probably creating your blogs your social media in the learn and try phase you're creating your web page your videos your webinars mm -hmm. your demos, mm -hmm. for that matter and the buy phase, these are your customers' uh, reviews and your community uh, engagement that you have, right? The user groups, mm -hmm. things like that. And then your advocacy phase is where you're thinking about your customer success story. So all of these are mm -hmm. part of that memorable story, right? So your start mm -hmm. is your discover and learn phase. Your middle is your try and buy. And your end is your advocacy. Mm -hmm. You can actually create mm -hmm. your content based on that. And this will allow you to create arcs narrative arcs this will allow you mm -hmm. to think about themes and topics that's relevant for your audience and then create uh, your storylines along the way so yeah awesome thank you for asking the question mm -hmm. and when it comes to finding a true storyteller so it must be a, an active user who is satisfied with our product mm -hmm. and can kind of tell our story to others right we can't Absolutely. influence this directly but we can kind of um, instill this story into his or her narrative indeed and that's where like when you think about like the hero's journey or any uh <clears throat> narrative arc that is out there that tells that compelling story you can be the ones helping these storytellers mm -hmm. and also for us as product marketing we need to know who, who our customer success stories are right so when i go mm -hmm. talk about the next section in product launch without having the right testimonials without having the right stories it's hard for mm -hmm. others to find you. And so this becomes mm -hmm. a fundamental part into that narrative and story itself. So absolutely, yep. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so take a different shift, right? We just talked about all the core elements of product marketing. We talked about how do we create our messaging and positioning? How do we think about our buyer persona? How do we understand our market and the audience that we're going after? Next is thinking within the company, right? So now you have a launch you want to put together. You are trying to create the story. You're trying to put together all the information that you need for this launch. And that means you need to bring stakeholders together, right? So influence is all about that. I call this my 10 steps to a launch. This has helped me in making sure that I'm not missing out on the key elements of a launch. But at the same time, I'm paying attention to all the key factors. So planning and OKRs is fundamental. Yes, we are creating a new product. We are trying to drive revenue. That's an outcome. What I'm trying to figure out here is what are my OKRs that I can influence as product marketing, right? So product sales, marketing together, creating those OKRs. Then I like to focus on number five, which is my early adopter program. Let's say we're creating a new product in the uh, market. Or maybe the, there are different products like that in the market, but we are creating a new product or adjacent offering to the core product that exists today. Number five, your early adopter program is fundamental to making sure you're being successful there. And then six is paying attention to follow through, right? Oftentimes product marketing, we do our thing, then we're off to the next project or initiative. Number six allows us to make sure that we are actually measuring and tracking the 30, 90 and 180 days metrics. Did we achieve the goals we have set? Maybe it's certifications, maybe it's different aspects of um, sales pipeline, whatever it is, right? Tracking that information. And then also focusing on other aspects, right? Number 10 is not the end of the launch. Your end of the launch is once you've actually achieved your milestones, your key uh, metrics and OKRs that you've set forward. So that's important to pay attention to. And to do this, you need to know how many launches you're going to have in the year. How do we prioritize on the right launches? And so this is one way for me to kind of um, look at it in the right method uh, and also make sure that I'm connecting the dots between the two. 
So this allowed us to remove the, oh yes, every launch is important to then actually prioritizing which launches we wanna double down on and actually focus on so we can actually do a good job there. What this also allowed us to do is make sure we knew what kind of a launch it was, um, what are the different phases of the launch, what activities need to happen, which teams need to be part of this launch, and then also prioritize the goals that this launch is rearing for, right? So is it that new revenue? Is it expansion, churn, adoption, brand awareness, or industry leadership? And depending on where you are, you could also pay attention to the market segment. So if it is a new market segment you're going after, then you have a high launch risk. If it's existing customers, you probably have a low launch risk, right? So these allowed us to make sure we're focusing on the right priorities. And then came impact, right? So this was our chance to now focus on cross-functional teams. How do we make sure across product sales and marketing, we're doing the right things? Go ahead, Natalia. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm sorry, Tiff. Could you please go back one slide to mm -hmm. the product launch? I'm curious Absolutely. about the launch risk. What does it mean? So the launch risk is if it is a new market and new customers, you don't know if we'll find the right customers in the first year. And so the risk there is high. If mm -hmm. it is an existing customer base, you know the customers already <clears throat> love what you have to offer. And so there's more likelihood that they will consider testing out the new product or new feature that you're launching. So that's mm -hmm. what it means by the launch risk. Okay, thank you. Awesome, all right, thanks Natalia. Okay, so think about this aspect because a lot of times everything that we do in product marketing, right, we can be awesome storytellers, we can be awesome at getting the launch and the project management part done. But if we cannot understand how different teams work, and if we cannot uh, influence and impact how they operate, then it doesn't matter what we do. So I'll put a prompt for all, both of you. Um, what do you think is the biggest PMM team challenge as a leader? And you can come off mute and share um, since it's a small group. What do you think is our biggest challenge? So for me, to be honest, uh, because I'm a, a solo marketer for mm -hmm. a brand new SaaS platform, actually, mm -hmm. my biggest challenge in any product launches is that we're a startup, so we deliver new features every three weeks, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest. And my CEO just seems to like create the product roadmap out of his head, and he mm -hmm. doesn't ever set any smart goals for our product launches. Mm -hmm. So. And it's, uh, I, I raised this issue a few times, but mm. uh, it's not bringing anything so far. Mm. So I, I don't know how to approach this. I want him to give us some like indication, some measurable goals. Like I understand that we introduced some features to improve user experience, mm. to increase activation, mm. but it's not, it's never measurable. So this is my biggest challenge is to like align with CEO on what we're trying to achieve and how we can measure success. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a big part, right? And uh, I'll show you some examples. A lot of it sometimes irrespective of how the organization is structured, we might have to bring some of those goals and metrics forward and then get alignment. So I'll show you some examples. Hopefully this will give you some idea of how to navigate through it. So this is my starting point. Whenever I start a new team or when I start a new role, I like to sit down with my stakeholders. So these could be the leadership team. This could be um, my peers. This could be the team that's reporting to me and try to understand where we are today so that I can plan for where we want to be, right? So what do you think about the vision and strategy? How does this impact our work? What are some challenges and opportunities, short-term and long-term? How do we prioritize and how do we operate today, right? Resources, teams, how do we collaborate? And then the last question is, if you were in my position, what would you want to pay most attention to? And this could range from if I ask my sales leader, they'll say, okay, I need help with competitive intelligence. If I ask my product folks, They'll say, I need help with analyst engagement, whatever it is that they're looking for. Different variables, uh, different functions have different needs. And so it allows me to better understand 
how do I help them see where product marketing can add value, right? If everybody's asking for 10 different things, I'm going to be splitting my time and energy in different places. So this allows me to then talk to my manager and say, hey, this is how the teams are looking at where product marketing can add value. And then we can prioritize and come up with an action plan. Throughout the class, uh, I'll be including TED Talks and different resources that will help us also maybe think a little differently and be a bit, little creative. So I'll show you, I'll send you the clip uh, to this TED Talk where Ray actually talks about ideas, how we can win as a team. And it's not just that the loudest person in the room uh, engages with it, but it's for everybody to think of it. So through the course and the live sessions that I'll be doing, we'll have breakouts, right? So for some example, this assessment question that we had, maybe collectively as a group uh, in the cohort, we'll talk about what does the vision look like today? What are some of the challenges that we're seeing? And so this will bring our collective uh, thinking together into the process. And then we'll go through um, how to think about this when it comes to why does our customer decide to buy our product versus something else in the market? And this is what I like to think about the three steps, right? We need to understand the market, we need to understand the customer, and we need to understand the competition. So this article here about customer differentiation Help me kind of ask those questions and then put together a customer interview prep um, to kind of break the de details forward. What this allowed me to do is then actually sit down and start having conversations about what is it that product marketing can do and add value. As a team, and this was when our team extended beyond product marketing, right? We had product marketers, we had industry marketers, solution marketers. And so we rebranded ourselves as portfolio marketing. And we were the voice of the market. We were the voice of the customer. And this allowed us to think about customer at the center, all of these different teams, product, sales, marketing, UX, engineering, professional services, customer support, customer success. Everybody are part of what we do from messaging and positioning to launch, to buy a persona, to enablement, market presence, analyst engagement, everything. You name it, there isn't a function that we don't touch. What this made it clear is that we have five key disciplines that we wanna focus on. From buyer personas, to helping establish what those personas are, what the buyer journey could look like, to crafting that value proposition and narrative, right? That's the storytelling aspect, to then figuring out what our launch tiers are, how do we launch products? Is there a method to the madness, if you will, creating the right integrated marketing programs, and then figuring out what our go-to-market should be. We cannot be everything for everybody, right? If our product says we can do that, that means we can do nothing. So making sure we're going after the right market segments, that we're prioritizing in the right way. And then focusing on enablement, both on the sales side as well as the partner side. What sales plays do we want? What are repeatable? How do we make sure we're bringing the right content forward? And then establishing the right engagement across the different teams. Now, to be one team, it's easier said than done, right? We have all experienced it together. And so what we tried to do was have those conversations with the product leader, with the sales leader, with the marketing leader to understand what are our goals and objectives. Is our goal to look at customer lifetime value and increase that? Or is it about our average deal size? Is it market expansion? Is it industry penetration? What are we trying to do? Once we have clarity on that, then we can focus on what our shared goals will be across product sales and marketing. This could be your adoption, this could be your growth, your buyer persona and audience growth, for example. And this led to us focusing on our success metrics, right? EQL, are we looking at adoption? Are we looking at retention? Are we focusing on efficiency? So this is your pipeline, your volume, your uh, velocity that comes through. So this allowed us to then better understand how do we manage our stakeholders? And this focused on, first and foremost, identifying all the stakeholders across the different teams that you're in, right? And as you can see, there are so many different cross-functional teams that you engage with. So how do you build the right repo? How do you prioritize in the right way? That's where the OKRs come in. I like to think of OKRs as a three-legged stool. The first one is aligned to my customer. It's all about building that brand awareness, my integrated marketing programs. 
the second was focused on the employee. So collectively as a team, how do we build and become one team across product sales and marketing? And then the third was focused on the business, right? So this allowed me to focus on, I need to simplify my narrative and my story. I'm going from a technical audience to a line of business and C-level. How do I do that, right? So this, uh, this Natalia, to your question about how do we think about these objectives? How do I make sure I have the right SMART goals? I created these for my team and then worked with my product leader, with my sales leader, with my marketing leader to make sure we were aligned so that before we went into the quarter, we knew what we were working towards versus the quarter being done and then being told, oh, wait, product marketing didn't do anything for us, right? So this could help you and I'm happy to have more conversations and discussions to make sure we think about it in that way. And to do this, you need the right data, right? So we, I worked with basic rudimentary format, right? Worked with different teams, the content team, the web team, uh, the product team, sales teams, to make sure I had the right data to get the information that I needed. And here's another example of thinking about those OKRs, right? You could take that same extension uh, when I went to my next team where I was leading a global team of 25 folks in uh, 10 countries across product marketing and product management. I use the same format, first objective to the customer, second to the business, third to the employee. And this allowed us to make sure we were building the right clarity that we needed, but then also making sure that as a team, we were focusing on the right priorities. So that's what this course is going to be, right? So I've put together a course to help uh, articulate and find the true essence of product marketing. We'll be doing workshops, breakouts um, in the live sessions, and then there will be recordings and content that you can consume uh, through the cohorts that you are part of. So. That's why I'm super excited to be launching this uh, new Mastering the Art and Science of Product Marketing, everything that I've learned in the past 13 years. And I know that learning never stops. So everything uh, that I've learned so far is on my Substack, but I continue to add to it as I'm learning every day. Um, there's always something new to consume. So that's a little bit about what I wanted to share with all of you today. Thank you so much for joining. Let's go and build the next evolution of product marketing together. Um, I'll stay on for a few minutes if you have any questions or comments. Uh, thank you both for joining. Thank you so much, Steve. Wishing you the best. best. Thank you. Hey, is there a way to get these slides from you or are they just once you, you get the course? Uh, these slides, so you will get the recording after the session wraps up today. I think in 24 hours. If not, feel free to always reach out to me. I can of course share. And all of this is also on my Substack, so you have access to ah, perfect. all the slides in there as well. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you both. Have a wonderful day. Take Thank care. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.